Hello humans, my name is Takoda. I'm the project supervisor at Angel Nook. When it comes to applying heirloom traditions paint, it's all about preparation. With proper prep, HTP will give you a beautiful, extremely durable finish over almost anything. First, we need to sniff the surface. Is it wood? Is it metal? Is it damaged furniture? Whatever it is. HTP will make it look fantastic if you follow my mum's tips. Stay positive, keep your tail high, and may your paint cons never be empty. Hi, welcome to Angel Snook. Today I want to talk about the prep that's required for the paints that you see me using all the time, that all-in-one paint by Heirloom Traditions. This paint, no deglosser, normally all it's going to take is either using the liquid with a green scrubby or the wipes to scrub and wipe down your surface and then start applying your paint, which makes this paint so super easy to use and wonderful. And by the way, I am not paid for this at this point in my life. So it is simply because I believe in these products and if they are used properly, this paint is almost indestructible in any use on any surface when you've prepped properly for it. With that being said, if you look at this piece that I have here, this is not going to be a wipe it down with deglosser, scrub it, and when they're talking wipe it down, it's not do a little gentle wipe on here. It's put some scrub into it to get this clean and clear of dust, grease, oils from being handled. No matter how clean you keep your house, the surface needs deglossed. Because if you don't, you're not going to get the etching that the deglosser leaves, and it's not going to give you as good an adhesion for the paint. On the top of this, there's finish, there's missing finish, there's scrapes, there's gouges, there's chips, and it's all over the piece. Um, and for instance, down here, there is a piece missing here off of the front. Yes, this is a somewhat rustic piece, but it can look a lot better if a little extra prep is done. If I sand this down to get this down to a smooth finish, I don't have to sand it to raw wood, but in this case, I do need to sand it. Remove all the sanding residue, degloss it, and then start painting with it. But before I do, any of these devets, any of these gouges, have got to be filled with wood putty. The paint is self-leveling, but you have to understand the difference between self-leveling paint and self-levelers like for concrete. When you're pouring something on concrete to level out and fill divots in a floor, that's going to fill and level to a flat surface. When you're talking about self-leveling in paint, what you were talking about is whatever the surface is, if it's all bumpy, if it's got gouges in it, or if it's perfectly smooth, the paint is going to dry to exactly the same thickness over that surface. So whatever your surface looks like now, when you paint it, it's going to look like that again. If it's smooth, it's going to be smooth. If it has gouges or big scrapes in it, those are going to show in the paint. And every time you put another layer of paint on, those are going to be accentuated even more. This piece, when I start to work on it, because of the finish that was put on here. There's lots of crackling. There's lots of broken pieces of paint on here. It's chipped and peeled. It was the intent when this was finished this way, but it needs a lot of repair. It's got damage on it. When I want to start painting this, I need to get all of this smooth. So I'm gonna need to sand that smooth. 
Do I need to sand it all back down to the galvanized metal? No, but I do need to get it to where there's none of this chippiness because when I apply the paint, <clears throat> that chippiness is all going to show and it's going to look like you tried to put lipstick on a pig. You're not going to have a smooth finish. These are pieces to a project that I'm going to be working on. Right now, this is very rustic and rough. If I wanted it to stay this way and I was using a stain on it, for instance, I could leave it like this and then I could highlight the roughness to get a rustic look again. But if I just degloss and paint this as it is, every one of this rough edge is going to show through that paint and it's not going to look like a nicely finished paint piece. So my choice is when I decide what I'm going to do with this, if I'm going to paint, I'm going to sand this and get it nice and smooth. To feel this right now, it's very rough to the touch. This piece, however, all it's going to need is wiped down with the wipes or with the liquid. Either one works equally well. The wipes have they look, when you see them on the cameras and all, they look like they are just like a wet wipe that you would use. They're not. They're rough. So when I scrub with that, and I'm not just doing a little light wipe here because that's not going to clean it, you can hear the scratchiness to it. I'm also going to do the bottom because when I do this, I am going to do the bottom as well. You can see what came off of it, and this tray had already been cleaned. The deglosser really gets anything off that you need off of it. It's ready to go. That took no time at all. This cabinet door. The finish is in horrible shape. Either someone tried to start stripping it, that's actually what it looks like, and gave up on it, but it's got some finish, some not. Here's the caveat with deglossing raw wood. Raw wood is its own particular animal. If I soak this with deglosser, I'm going to raise the grain on this wood. Then I'm going to have to do a lot of sanding to get it back to a smooth surface. But if I use the white, I'm getting off any of the oils. If you have bought sure cabinets raw wood to do them, then this will wipe off any of the oils and get it ready to work on. And obviously on this, these are bad hinges. I would be taking those off and will before I do anything with it. But it did not get the wood sopping wet but it's nice and clean. When you're looking at your kitchen cabinets, one of the places that gets a lot of dust and buildup of grease is in these areas right here. So one of the things you can do is take the wipe, wrap it onto a butter knife, and go into those grooves and get out any of the that residual. That doesn't take long. It doesn't make cuts in your cabinet, but it gets that area clean. So it's going to adhere really well. This cabinet door is pretty much what you're going to see in houses that have had the honey oak doors. Your finish is pretty much intact. So all it's going to require is the wipe down. There's some paint or something on here, but it's smooth. So all I'm going to need to do is get this cleaned out. I can really see gunk on this down here, so I am going to go back on it. There is a spot here. Paint. 
just even my green scrubbing got that smooth. But if I wanted to, I could take a piece of sandpaper and just fix that piece. But I am really putting some force behind how I am wiping this down. Doing the same on the back. That's where some gunk was from where one of the pads were. That I would need to take off and I would use sandpaper there because the glue is going to leave a gloppy mess there from those old stick-ons. That would be another step that I would do with this. And because this has stuff all in the groups there, I would take my butter knife and I would get in there. and get that off of there. Wipe it down. And make sure your edges have also gotten it. And you're ready to paint. This paint gives an absolutely gorgeous finish. But if you have not prepped your surface properly, you're not going to get a beautiful finish. When you've got cabinets like this or a vanity or a piece of furniture that the finish is pretty much intact, you're good to go. But if you have cabinets that somebody has done a really bad paint job on and has runs, has finish or the finish is really bad in areas of it, you're going to have to do some sanding to prep that to make it look good. Or when you put the all-in-one paint over it, you're still going to see those big runs. And it's not going to work well for you. When you do fill with wood putty and you've sanded it smooth, you need to seal that before you start painting the whole thing. You can do it two ways. You can put a coat of polyurethane on it, let it dry, Wipe it down. Shellac works really well. You can get the really small cans of it. Just put a coat on it. The shellac I like best because the shellac dries so fast. Do a light sand to get rid of the rough feel that's on that wood putty. Put one coat of paint right over that area where you've repaired with the wood putty. Using brush and roll, let it dry. Then start painting the entire surface and you won't have highs and lows. When you paint over repair spots that have not been sealed, the paint is going to give high and low spots because it is absorbed into the wood putty. It's not absorbed into the areas that have the finish still on it. So it's going to give you two different sheets. And that's really hard to even out. But if you seal it to start with, you do the prep work, you're done. And it's the rest of it is downhill from there. It's fast, easy. Put the paint on. It's got the primer. It's got the paint. It's got the top coat. There's nothing else you need to apply. You don't need top coats. You don't need primer before it. And in fact, primer before it, nine times out of ten, is going to give you texture in your paint, which is totally the opposite of what you want. Hope this helps to clarify the best things to do for deglossing to get the best outcome with the paints. Thank you. I'll give you some examples of why prep is so important for good adhesion, for good finish. In this workshop, there are all different kinds of cabinets that have all been painted in all-in-one paint to match. Up here were maple cabinets we had taken out of our kitchen and redone but down here this is a plastic rub and made cabinet over on this side over here this was one of the white plastic covered laminate that a lot of people were peeling it off i left it on and painted it this workshop gets a heavy workout it's not treated gently Tools get closed with hanging out of the drawers, get slammed into them, metal different pieces do. There is no babying in this shop. 
There are times these counters are full. The paint that I did on the back for the faux brick, it's been bumped into I don't know how many times and still looks great. It stays adhered if you properly prep. It's going to take getting bumped into, banged into. Now, obviously, you take a screwdriver across it or your child scrapes a metal toy down one of your lower cabinets. It's going to cut it. There isn't a paint in the world that can handle that. But when you look at the finish on this, on all of them, it's a beautiful, smooth finish. It doesn't matter what it was painted onto. It holds. It holds indoors, outdoors, on metal, on resin, on clay, on concrete. It holds up. The finish on the top here. This is done with the stains. It holds up. It doesn't, it handles the day-to-day -day lived in spaces. It doesn't have to be baby. Now the first 30 days, you need to treat it gently. But that, that means use the handles. Don't grab it and open it up, especially with rings and stuff on. It needs 30 days to fully cure. But that's not a big deal. You wipe it down in those 30 days with a warm cloth, well, I'm sorry, warm water and a cloth, and you've cleaned up whatever it is. After that, there's a whole list of cleaners that are safe and not. For myself, I use a mild solution of Dawn, a few drops of Dawn in a small spray bottle. Spray, wipe, it comes right off. It's not one of those things that you have to scrub your cabinets to get them clean. The paint repels that kinds of materials, the greases and stains and all getting on it. It comes right off. I had salsa splatter all over one of my cashmere cabinets while I was canning. I got most of it off. I needed to pay attention to what I was doing with the salsa and said, okay, fine, I'm just leaving it. Two or three days later, I got back to it. I spritzed it with the Dawn and water. It wiped right off. There was no stain and tomato sauce is the worst for staining in a kitchen. You couldn't even tell it had been on there. So prep, 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 and you're ready to go with something that's gonna be durable for many, many years. This doorway has been done for almost five years. We had the top eyebrow window replaced when we had our windows put in almost three years ago. And I had to paint, repaint around the window and all, and it matched exactly. I actually went down and even did a swipe on here just to see if there had been any fading at all with the polo and there wasn't. The way our door sits here, it gets six to eight hours, depending on the season, of really direct, hot Florida sun. Normally, in a situation like that, you would have the lower half of your door that gets the most sun all day, much lighter than the upper part. This is exactly the same color it was the day I painted it. The entry tile here has been painted. It gets sand, water, constantly on here. There's no way to avoid it here in Florida. You can sweep till you're blue in the face and you're still going to have sand being ground into it. This has been power washed before. It's ready to be cleaned for this spring. It's not been cleaned yet. But I wanted to show you using a green, I'm sorry, a blue scrubby absolutely never hit your floors that have been done with a green scrubby. It will sand through your finish. The blue does not. The blue is safe. When you're dealing with something like this entry, where that you have a tile edge that is exposed, you cannot stop your water resistant sealer here. You have to go down along this edge, and I went down into the mortar as well to seal that. Everywhere that this was exposed, it was here. There's another piece behind me that is exposed. That all got sealed over the edge really well to make it so that water doesn't otherwise, water will build up here, standing water during heavy rains, and it would have gone under the paint and pulled that up. 
This has been done for over three years. Once this has all been sealed, it is very durable for cleaning. Uh, normally we just power wash it, but I wanted to let you see how quickly and easily um, dirt comes up off of it just with the mild solution of Dawn and water. Blue scrubby, never, never the green one, but a blue one works fine. I've also used a very soft um, plastic brush to get into these grooves too, if I'm just doing a quick cleanup on it. But it can withstand all of that. And it's done. It's just not a lot of effort, not a lot of harsh cleaner. And done. This entry floor gets sand tracked on it constantly. It's been three and a half years since it was done. It still looks exactly like it did the day I finished it. The finish holds up fabulously. And to say something is going to hold up with wear, when a floor can hold up, anything can hold up with this paint. But proper prep was done. I scrubbed the floor, then I scrubbed the floor with a green scrubby and the deglosser to make sure any residues of old cleaners or anything that had been walked on the floor was gone. And then did the steps for painting, stenciling, and sealing. These uppers are three coats of cashmere with no primer. And this has all, this is four and a half, close and getting close to five years of daily use. There's no paint missing around any of the knobs. There's no chipping, flaking, peeling, nothing. These cabinets are still pristine. All I do is when I wipe my counters, I watch, check and see if there's a spray of anything, wipe it down with the Dawn and water mixture and paper towels, just wipe it off. And they're in exactly the same shape they were when I stopped painting them. This is my sink counter. It gets a lot of water spills on it. That's just how it is when you're cleaning dishes or it sprays because you're cleaning a skillet, whatever. The condition of this is still brand new. We do have the habit of grabbing the handles, not grabbing the doors. And these particular knobs are a little short so it would be easy if you weren't grabbing them well to be scratching it with fingernails all the time. But this is the quality of the level this paint will hold up to if it is properly prepped and applied according to their directions. The top is two and a half years. The vanity was done with multiple layers of the oil-based stains and I purposely created texture in it so that it would actually feel like driftwood. This is used daily. The floor is the same age, two and a half years. And this is a bathroom floor, which you know is going to get water on it with people taking showers and baths. And water slopped out of the sinks at times, depending on who's using it. Nothing on this has bubbled, nothing has come up, nothing has peeled. I use Dow scrubbing bubbles on it to clean it all the time. Shower was beige. I layered paints after deglossing it really well. First I scrubbed it really well with a green scrubby with um, 
scrubbing bubbles, rinsed all that off when it was dry. I came back and scrubbed inside and out with a deglosser. And in fact, we used to have a tub here and I had already done all these tiles around the tub. We removed those, took all the mortar, drywall off the back and reinstalled them on this. That's how well the paint holds up if you properly prep. So this shower has been done for four and a half years now. And you can see on the inside, there's nothing peeling. There's nothing lifting up. It has the three coats of the water resistant sealer on it. And it's super easy to clean. So bottom line is if you prep properly and most of the time for things you're going to do, it's going to be just the deglosser and you're done. But for special circumstances, you need to be aware that there's extra work that needs to be done. Like I have spoken with you about, because if you're investing in this paint, you need to apply it the way the company is saying to get the very best finish. That's pretty much the, the, the case with anything that you are using, any tools, anything, you need to use them according to the company tutorials. Another thing that is just fabulous with this paint is it mixes true like art paints do. So yes, there's currently 36 colors. And you go, well, I don't have enough, there's not enough color choices. Yes, there are, because you can mix virtually any color you want because this doesn't work like your big box store paints do. This mix is true like art paints and you can consistently get the same color over and over to get the shade you want for your house. Thank you. Hey you, get out of my way. Coming through. I'm curious. Do you like what my mum and pa are doing with this YouTube channel? Do you want to see them do more videos like this? If so, I have something to say about it. Mum and pa are working their butts off here. Do it, do it. Clickety click the buttons. <laughs> Hey, I've been looking everywhere for you guys. So sorry, when I take my humans to the park for training, I get so excited that sometimes I can't control myself and Paul has to censor my pictures. Oops, he missed one. They obviously need more training. Mommy, you need to talk to Papa. He forgot to cover me. Wee oui, wee. Oui.